स्वाध्याय टीवी डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी Welcome again in the series of a lecture regarding the topic of operating costing, broader area that is the cost accounting. In the last three sessions, we are we were discussing the operating costing, how the operating costing is actually required, which type of businessmen and the manufacturer business service class peoples can prepare the operating cost sheet for their consent for their requirements. We were actually try to discuss the few problems also regarding the transport uh, services who are actually involving with the transport services. precisely a goods transport or a passenger transport here i am today taking a one example uh, who is providing a services for the passenger transport and which is actually related for the comparative analytical operating statement for their services for the variant type of different transport routes it means that the company is having a transport services where they are having a one bus but the different different locations so what type of a cost incurred in the particular route and how much amount of expenditures are actually covered to ask the freight from the passengers so this is what the all about we are going to discuss in today's uh, session or today's practical problem so in this way we just try to understand that the how the things are going to compare the comparisons between the different routes suppose maybe there is a one route that is actually run between the chandigarh and delhi then the other route that is run delhi to agra then the third route maybe they were actually try to find out the route inside the delhi city only so it means there are certain amount of cost incurred in a different routes maybe the different um, uh, num num kilometers is also variant it is not remain same the destinations are not same so that means the kilometers are also not same and on the basis of that the fixed cost may be remain same but the variable cost are going to change on the basis of their kilometers run by the particular bus so in that way the what amount of cost incurred per kilometer and how it would be reflect on the different routes and which routes are actually a more profitable and more concern on the basis of their utilization of the routes as well as the utilization of the services this is what we are going to discuss in this particular session and then we just to identify the how the operating cost is actually efficient to evaluate the system appropriately whether worked or not so let's begin with the transfer of this particular services and let's see the question how the question is actually rectify the different services so moving to the next point and that is a question the question is so that uh, the rakesh is the owner of a bus which runs between the different routes as i already mentioned that the first route is delhi to chandigarh that means they have a first route here this is delhi to chandigarh and this delhi to chandigarh route is actually identified first route this is the first route delhi to chandigarh and back for 10 days in a month and back it means that this shows as it's a to and fro it means that they have a written journey also it means it is not a one way journey it's to and fro journey now they have another route it works for 10 days so we have the one option is that the com uh, company is working uh, for the first route is delhi to chandigarh and it is to and fro journey for 10 days a month then second is the distance from delhi to chandigarh is yeah the another very much important information is uh, it runs delhi to chandigarh and it is actually 150 kilometers the bus completes this trip from delhi to chandigarh and back in the same day that is again the another important information uh, the bus is actually runs uh, delhi to chandigarh and back uh, in the same day that means the company is having a route delhi to chandigarh which works in the same day and it is the important information is one is the, it works for 10 days that's one thing and the second important thing is it is 150 km so now first uh, route information is very clear that is Ch delhi to chandigarh important information is it works for 10 days it is to and fro it's not a one way and the another important uh, thing is that works for 10 days along with the 150 km so that is the first part that's a first route now moving to the another part of the question the bus uh, bus goes another 10 days the bus goes is actually another 10 days in a month towards agra that means 
the company have another routes for Delhi to Agra and it works for again 10 days only and which distance covered is Delhi to Agra is 120 kilometers. See, so that means the company is having a Delhi to Agra routes which is 120 kilometers and it works for again 10 days. The trip is also completed in the same day. That is again the information is it works for one day only. So to and fro journey from Delhi to Agra, it is also in a day it completes. It never works, it's overnight journey. It's the same day work. That means once it is start from the Delhi, which is rich to Agra, then again come back from Agra to Delhi in the same day and it works one way trip and that kilometer is actually 120 and that is actually runs for 10 days. So this, there are two routes, one is Delhi to Chandigarh, second route is Delhi to Agra. Now I'm, as I already discussed that there, is, there are three options, the another third option is also there. Now see the question, for the rest of four days, uh, now here, uh, it presume that the company is working 24 days in a month. So that means maybe they were not actually work uh, four Sundays and two Saturdays. So that means the from 30 days, they work only 24 days. So 10 days it's actually work for Delhi to Chandigarh, 10 days it works for Delhi to Agra. Now the remaining four days, uh, actually it works for local. Inside the city, the bus is actually runs. Now what would be the effective mileage and effective calculation of the cost for the remaining four days? For that we need to see the what type of information has been given in the current particular question. Now see the here, for the rest four days of its operation, in a month it runs in a local city. Now it works only for a local city, that means it runs only in the, uh, uh, in the Delhi city itself only. Daily distance covered in local city and it is actually covered 40 kilometers. That means the local city is works for 40 kilometers. It is a round trip only. Here it is not required to mention to and fro. Why? Because of it is worked, it works only in Delhi city. So that it may be a round trip or it may be a circular route or something like that, which runs total in all 40 kilometers in a day. So it means Delhi to Chandigarh, to and fro trip, Delhi to Agra also to and fro trip, but in Delhi, it's a circular route, maybe it runs total in all 40 kilometers. So there are three routes. Now again, see the question, we identified three routes. One is Delhi to Chandigarh, second is Delhi to Agra, and the third is the local city. So that means we identified the three routes. Now moving to the second part of the question, calculate the rate uh, for Rakesh should charge per passenger kilometer. This is the question. They asked to find out per passenger kilometer. This is more important thing. This is what they actually uh, asked in the question. They asked to find out per passenger kilometer, how much Rakesh can charge per passenger kilometer uh, on the basis of these different routes. Moving to the next sentence, when he wants to earn a 33.13 percent, that means this is a profit margin. Rakesh willing to charge 33 into one third percent profitability. He, he is actually having a certain amount of a profitability proportion and on the basis of that proportion, he would get an idea that the 33 into one third percent or 33.33 percent profitability can be charged on their cost or on their particular uh, total amount of expenditures incurred for the services. So this is what they want to, he want to charge the profits. Now, how we could actually charge this profit and after the profitability has been added into this particular cost, what would be the freight would be charged from the passenger. See the next sentence. The other informations are given below like the also give a passenger fare for Chandigarh and Agra, fine. That means they ask how much amount of a fare would be charged for Chandigarh and Agra, even local city also, right? So that means the second in, in, uh, again information they want to ask from us that is passenger kilometer. The first is per passenger kilometer and the second is passenger fare. So how much amount of passenger fare would be charged from the customer, Spe precisely for Chandigarh and Agra. May not be a local, but we, we will find out all the three. How much amount of fare will charge for Chandigarh and as well as Agra for and third is local city. Now moving to the uh, another part is the next sentence it's mentioned that the total fixed cost of the month is 5668, which is clearly given in the question itself only. Total amount of fixed cost incurred for the particular month here, after you read this sentence, you would get an idea that the statement and informations are given monthly basis only. It means that we are preparing an operating cost statement 
on a monthly basis. We do not want to require to prepare the operating cost statements for an yearly basis or another particular or a per a particular period. It precisely says that the inf on the basis of these informations, we would prepare the operating cost statement on a monthly basis. Because of the fixed cost is uh, given and mentioned in this question, it is on a monthly basis, which is 5668 rupees precisely. Total amount of fixed cost is mentioned. Now, moving to the second part. Diesel consumption is 4 kilometer per liter and costing is rupees 2 per liter. This is important statement. The diesel consumption is actually uh, 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 2 rupees per liter and which actually covered 4 kilometers in a liter. It means that the bus is over an average per kilometer is 4 kilometer which required 2 rupees every 4 kilometers. It shows that the, when the bus runs 4 kilometer, the cost of diesel is rupees 2. That means we need to find out the how many total number of kilometer runs by this particular bus in a month. On the basis of that, we would get an idea the how much total amount of diesel cost is incurred. That is variable cost. This is a variable cost. Now, uh, it starts the variable cost one by one. So, it's first is variable cost is diesel. Moving to the next is lubrication oil. It is lubricant expense. Lubrication oil rupees 20 per 100 kilometer. This is second variable cost. Rupees 20 per 100 kilometer. And um, uh, average is already mentioned here. That is 4 kilometer per hour and that's something like that. So, on the basis of that, we would get an idea. The rupees 20 per 100 kilometers, we would compare. If the vehicle runs 100 kilometer, the cost of lubrication is 20 rupees then how much amount of lubricate cost is incurred if the vehicle runs total actual kilometer is this much, how much total amount of lubricate, lubrication cost is incurred in a month. So, uh, we, on the basis of this equation, we would get an idea the how much lubricate cost is incurred per month or a precise and the specific month uh, so far is concerned the services provided, right. Moving to the next part. Normal capacity of the bus is 50 passenger. This is again the another information. Capacity of the bus is 50 passenger. It means that the intact of the bus is 50. Fine. Occupancy ratio is must be different. That we need to identify again. The how much actually the bus carried the number of passengers and this. But total maximum number of passengers carried in a one trip, maybe two or fro anything. But ultimately they cannot go beyond 50 passengers. The total sitting capacity is 50 only. So maximum capacity of the bus is 50. So in all, any trip the 50 passengers maximum can be taken by the service provider. So, this is what the another important information. Now, the last paragraph, this is again important information. Passenger tax is 20 percent of his net takings. Net takings, there is a one formula. I will tell you later on what, what is the formula to be applied to find out the passenger tax. But for the find out the passenger tax, we need to find out the net earnings. How the net earnings will be determined? That I will tell you at the time of the solution of this question. Moving to the next part. The bus is generally occupied 90 percent of occupancy. That is right. Of the capacity when it goes to Chandigarh. Fine. That means the occupancy ratio is different for all the different routes. The first route, the occupancy ratio, sorry, <coughs> first route occupancy ratio is 90 percent. It means that when it runs Delhi to Chandigarh, they have an occupancy ratio or the capacity carried by the bus pro service provider, it is 90 percent. The next route is Delhi to Agra. At that point of time, the occupancy ratio or a carried capacity by the bus provider is 80 percent. It means that or on that time when it runs from Delhi to Agra, the company is having only 80 percent of capacity is occupied. The remaining seats are vacant. It is not occupied. That is what we understood on the basis of this question. And this is 80 percent when it runs from Delhi to Agra. All right. And it is always full. Right. This is more again important. It is always full when it runs within the local city. That means, when it runs in the local city in Delhi itself only, the bus occupied full capacity. So, that means all 50 passengers are seated in the bus. It runs always with the full capacity for all the days where the bus is runs inside the city or it is domestic tour or we can say it is a uh, Delhi city tour. Right. This is what we have a question. We already identified the few things. I will again repeat. I just wanted to try the question you should, uh, you should understand properly. Once you understand the question properly, automatically you can identify how it can be resolved and how you can find out the solution of the question. 
you need to prepare the summary of the question. That is why I highlighted the whole question wherever it is required. First is there are three routes, Delhi to Chandigarh, Delhi to Agra and third is local city. The second important thing is the how many days it works for the different different routes. Then third important thing is how many number of kilometers is actually runs for the each route. Then fourth route is how many number of days it workings for the each route. Then it uh, requires the, uh, the whether it is a one way trip um, uh, with the occupancy ratio or it is two and fro trip with the occupancy ratio. It is a two and fro trip with the occupancy ratio. Capacity is 50 passengers, but it is not always carried with the full capacity. They have a different different capacity on each trip. So that also it is mentioned in the question and after that they have a two important information the fixed cost and variable cost. Fixed cost precisely mentioned in the question and variable cost there are two variable cost one is a diesel cost and the second is lubrication cost. That means the other cost is maybe already covered in the fixed cost. So we do not want to assume that, that there are no there may not be other fixed cost or variable cost. We assume that the whatever the other cost are there it is already covered in the fixed cost. So the matter of the cost is covered fixed and variable it is also precisely mentioned. Now what they ask? They ask two things. One to find out the passenger kilometer that is first thing and the second they find they ask to find out the fare amount charges fare it means freight the how much amount of a freight or fare charges from the passenger who is taking the services from the service provider. So these are the two things which need we need to identify from the solution. But before we start the solution of this question there are certain hidden items also which clearly not defined in the question that we need to identify. From the beginning of this chapter explanation I want I wanted to inform I, I would always tell you that the thing is which way that concern if you remember that I was telling that the thing is when you are trying to resolve this question you need to identify whether the actual mileage or effective mileage is are given in the question or not. And we tried from the first problem itself only whether the actual mileage or effective mileage is given or not. If it is not given then we need to find out first actual mileage and effective mileage of the respected question because of this is an unit. This is an unit where we can apply this unit to determine the operating cost of the service provider. Without the unit you cannot determine the operating cost. So the here the cost unit is passenger kilometer and passenger kilometer we need both actual mileage as well as effective mileage which are not clearly mentioned in this question. It means that we need to identify and determine actual mileage as well as effective mileage first. This is your first part of the solution. Second part is we need to prepare the statement of operating cost set. Where, wherever the informations are clearly mentioned we will put it in the cost set. But there are certain information which are not clearly mentioned. For that we need to find out the informations through the proper working and will determine the values of the respected cost which are not mentioned. And after that we will add the two things one is the profitability percentage and then second is passenger tax. After that you would get an idea what amount of cost per passenger kilometer that is your first answer and then we would find out the how much amount of fare amount will charge from the passenger. So let us begin with the solution of this question. Here this is your the first part as I mentioned that the two things we need to find out one is the calculate of a monthly kilometers that is actual mileage. As I mentioned it is actual mileage and when you have an actual mileage without actual mileage you cannot act, or actual kilometer right without actual mileage or actual kilometer you cannot determine the what amount of a diesel cost or other 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 cost which are missing. So for that you need this actual kilometers or actual mileage first and second important thing is calculate of the monthly passenger kilometer that is effective mileage. I use the word is effective mileage or effective kilometers. These are the two things is most important part of the question which are not mentioned in the question. If you if you see the previous questions and problems you can ex, you easily identify that the actual mileage and effective mileage are, were mentioned in the question. But in this question we do not have actual and effective mileage and that is why we start the solution of this problem from this particular two workings where we will find out the actual mileage and effective mileage. Very simple formula to find out the actual mileage. What is the formula? The formula is which are the routes the bus is actually runs. First, the second is 
the how many uh, how much distance between these two uh, places whether it is delhi to chandigarh delhi to agra or a local city that's your first question second how many days it works that is again important or whether it runs one way or it runs both the way that means to and fro trip or it's a one way trip so on the basis of that you can easily determine the how much actual kilometer runs per day or in a month so let's begin to find out first actual mileage on the basis of the question so see the question what are the informations required for find out the actual mileage the first information is required is how many number of days it works so 10 days what is the distance between these kilometers this is your second information to find out the actual mileage right and the third information is it is uh, delhi to chandigarh and back in the same day that means it's to and fro trip as i mentioned it is to and fro trips so to and fro trip it means this is your third information it's a two way uh, route so on the basis of that we will actually find out the actual mileage see here first delhi to chandigarh number of days is 10 distance between the two uh, places is 150 kilometers and two trip you can write to and fro also but two trip why the ones is going from delhi to chandigarh and coming back from chandigarh to delhi so that is why it's two trip so 150 kilometers multiplied by 2 it comes 3000 300 kilometers and it works 10 days that's why the first answer is 3000 actual kilometer runs between delhi to chandigarh that is your first answer now delhi to agra it works again 10 days that's right distance between delhi to agra is 120 kilometers that's again the second information and again the two trip that means it's to and fro so it works going uh, delhi to agra and coming back from agra to delhi so it's always two trip delhi to agra it's 120 kilometers coming back again agra to delhi it's 120 kilometers so 120 multiplied by 2 <clears throat> yes and it works 10 days so in that sense 2400 kilometers it works now the third information local city it works 4 days right 40 kilometers each day so it means that the 40 kilometers it runs in a day and the total how many number of days it works in local city that is 4 days so 40 kilometers and 4 days here it is not a to and fro trip it is simply said that is 40 kilometers it means we assume that it is a circular route in total per day 40 kilometer it runs it uh, the multiplication of this is 160 kilometer there are only three routes actual information of the kilometer vehicle runs listen actual mileage it means that the vehicle actually runs in number of days the service provides which is, this is actually actually runs this particular vehicle where the service is active right we are not find out the effective mileage effective mileage when you applied effective mileage the passenger and other information intact will be multiplying i am not i am not actually covered the intact here i am covered how much actually vehicle runs in a particular route in number of days that's it so the total number of actual mileage is 5560 kilometers this is an actual mileage and it it will be helpful to find out the information for diesel cost as well as the lubricate oil or lubrication expenses now moving to the second part we'll find out the effective kilometers that is the calculate calculation of a monthly passenger kilometers normal capacity of the bus is 50 passenger that is an information uh, which we identified from the question itself only here the bus having a normal capacity is 50 right so now we'll find out how much total effective mileage is there see the delhi to chandigarh fastest R very simple way to find out first these three informations are remain same here only see 10 days multiplied by 150 kilometers multiplied by two trip that is remain same now what we need to add to find out the effective mileage only how many number of passengers are traveled on this particular route that's it how you can find out the total intact capacity of the bus is 50 passengers what is an occupancy ratio of this bus that is 90% on all the days for this particular route so 50 passengers multiplied by 90% it comes to 45 so that is why 45 passengers is multiplying 90 passengers are there but intact is 50 passengers multiplied by 90 it comes 45 
and that is why the 45 passengers are traveled on each day whether it is a, uh, towards uh, Chandigarh or coming back to Delhi, each route or each trip 45 passengers were there on an average for all the 10 days and that is why multiplied by 45 passengers. So, the total multiplication if you want to directly multiply it, you can directly multiply it with the 3000 kilometers by 45 passengers then you would get direct answer also. But why I am writing here you can easily identify the difference between the actual mileage and effective mileage. Otherwise, once you understand you can directly multiplying the 3000 kilometers multiplied by capacity that is 45 passengers. The multiplication is 135,000. This 135,000 is your effective mileage of first route Delhi to Chandigarh. The second route same way calculation no change at all Delhi, Delhi to Agra 10 days as it is the uh, distance between two places is 120 kilometers is also remain same to and fro trip the two trip is also remain same only the changes here intake capacity is 50 passengers but the occupancy ratio is 80 percent that means the carried capacity by the traveler travel providers having 80 percent only so 50 passengers multiplied by 80 it comes 40 passengers so it assume that when it runs between Delhi to Agra, the intake is only 40 passenger on an average on each day, each trip, which will be multiplying by to the 2400 kilometer multiplied by 80, uh, 40 passengers, sorry, right. And the multiplication it comes 96,000. This is your passenger kilometer. 96,000 is passenger kilometer, which is called effective mileage, all right. Moving to the third is local city Delhi. It works four days, same year, 40 kilometers, same as it is, only the multiplying with 50 passengers, it works full capacity. It means the total capacity uh, carried by the bus is 50 and it works all the four days with the full capacity, all 50 passengers are there. That means this is a something new, 50 passengers are carried in the bus with the full capacity it runs and the amount of certain things are going to realize. The profitability is remain same, cost it may be a differ and that is why the valuation of the particular things are going to change. See here how it would be differed that I will see uh, tell you at the, at the end of the particular problem. So, here the 8000 is effective mileage, the total effective mileage is 239000. This is very important when we are going to find out now, what amount of cost incurred per passenger kilometer, it would be find out on the basis of this 2,39,000 kilometers. And when we are find out the missing items of certain expenses cost, then at that point of time, it, the 5,560 kilometer, it means actual kilometer is used. So, I think so, you must be understood what are the difference of both this information. The first information is actually helpful to find out the missing cost, the cost which are not clearly defined. And second item is which will be helpful to find out the amount of overall passenger per kilometer, the how the passenger per kilometer can be determined on the basis of that uh, we need to determine this and we will find out the cost per passenger kilometer. Fine, moving to the next part, now we will prepare the statement of operating cost set. Statement of operating cost set mentioned passenger kilometers, it is 239,000, actual kilometers. 5560 kilometers. Start with the first item fixed cost as you mentioned I, I think so in earlier question also you have an idea how the statement of operating cost statement is prepared. It is always divided into a two part. The first part is a fixed cost, second part is a variable cost. Here I added something more also in this statement but which is also very much comfortable. There is no any precise statement format but you can you can prepare in this way also. So, fixed cost first part. See the question here. The fixed cost is, is clearly mentioned in the question which is 5668, total fixed cost incurred in this question is 5668. Now see in the statement fixed cost, fixed expense is 5668. Now what we need to find out per kilometer expense, per kilometer by what? Per kilometer for passenger kilometer. It means that we need to find out the how much per passenger kilometer cost is incurred here. All right, and that is why we need to divide this amount of expenses incurred, fixed cost incurred by the passenger kilometer. So, 5668 divided by 2,39,000 effective mileage divide by this 
in that way you would get an answer that is per passenger kilometer your fixed cost is 0 0.024. So, per passenger kilometer your fixed cost is 0 0.024 that is your first answer. Moving to the second part fixed cost is already given. So, this is your total fixed cost 5668 and 0 0.024 it is per passenger kilometer zero, uh, fixed cost. Second part is variable cost. Variable cost we have a two variable cost. One is diesel expenses and second is lubricant oil or lubricant expenses. Diesel expenses for that we need to see the question once again. See the question here. Diesel consumption is given 4 kilometer per liter and their costing is rupees 2 per liter. Now see the working. How you can find out the diesel expenses or diesel cost. If 4 kilometer this vehicle runs, the cost of diesel is rupees 2. How much actually, as I mentioned very clearly when I uh, actually uh, expressed this both the working, I told you when the any cost is missing, actual mileage will help to find out the missing cost. And when you find out the passenger kilometer, effective mileage will be used. So, when you find out this, we use effective mileage because of we find out if, uh, actu uh, what amount of cost incurred per passenger kilometer. So, uh, effective mileage will be used here. And when we find out the missing item of the cost is uh, concerned, that means when the diesel cost is not mentioned, how you can determine at that point of time actual mileage is required. Now see here the first working diesel cost, 4 kilometer it runs, cost of diesel is 2 rupees per kilometer or per liter sorry rather. Then 5560 kilometer runs, this is actual mileage, it runs for all the three different routes. What would be the cost of your diesel? which is comes to 2780 rupees. This is your diesel cost. I think so this is not new for you because of in the previous question also we find out the same way all the other meeting, missing expenses precisely variable cost. Diesel expense, petrol expense, lubricant expense, tire and tubes allocation all this variable cost which are given or mentioned in the question or uh, incurred on the basis of per kilometer it always works in this way or it always calculated like this. So, we already done these things in a past question also, in a past session also, I think so it is not new for this. So, diesel expense is incurred 2780. If you want to find out per passenger kilometer, again you need to divide this amount by 2,39,000 kilometers, passenger kilometers. So, your per passenger kilometer diesel cost is 0 0.012, per passenger per kilometer diesel cost is 0 0.012. This is your diesel cost per passenger kilometer. All right. Moving to the next part, lubricant oil. The same way we will put at the equation. If it runs 100 kilometers, the cost of lubricant is 20 rupees. Again, the missing items is always uh, find out with the help of actual mileage. Actual mileage is 5560 kilometers. What would be the lubricant oil total cost per month? 5560 multiplied by 20 divided by 100 kilometers, it is 1111. So, this is your lubricant cost or lubricant expenses. Per month it is not required to mention because it is per month only. We calculated this 5560 kilometers on a monthly basis only. So, automatically it works for monthly or maybe you can precisely say it for 24 days because of ultimately this vehicle runs for 24 days only. So, it is precisely this cost is incurred for 24 days only. Now, how it would be put it into the statement? See the statement lubricant expenses that is 1112 rupees. If you want to find out per passenger kilometer, again it will be divided by 2,39,000 kilometers and your per passenger cost is 0 0.004. This is your per passenger cost. Now, we find out both the variable cost, make a total total variable cost is 3892 rupees per passenger kilometers variable cost is 0 0.016 now that is your operating cost or you can say the total cost total cost or operating cost operating cost why use the word because of ultimately we are preparing a statement of operating cost and that's why we write here it is a operating cost the total amount of operating cost it means if you say this is a and this is B. So, operating cost is A plus B. Total fixed cost plus total variable cost 9560 rupees. That is your total operating cost. Per passenger kilometer operating cost is 0 
so 0 0.040 it's operating cost per passenger kilometer here you are almost you done it with the first part that means you already get an idea what amount of cost incurred per passenger per kilometer that is 0 0.040 so we we already done it with the first part of the question we prepared the operating statement and we find out the how much amount of cost incurred so far uh, the service is provided so that is 0 0.040 but they ask something more than that they ask two more things one is the amount of profitability they add the what amount of uh, amount it will be considered net takings after the profit is added right and they ask second thing the what amount of fare would be charged from the passenger for that we need to apply two more things here so see the question uh, two more things are there the first is the how much amount of profitability they had here it is mentioned the uh, person rakesh wanted to charge the profit 33.33 percent or 33 into one third percent on his net takings that means on his net takings this is very important word on his net takings it means that that is charge on sales price net taking it means the amount of uh, mrp or amount of uh, price will be charged by the service provided to the passenger which is called net takings which asks from the passenger which comes into the home the amount which actually comes from the consumer to the service provider it is called net takings it means the 33.33 percent profit is not asking a charge on cost price it's charge on a sales price so when we don't have a sales price see the statement we have cost price this is operating cost we don't have a sales price sales price would be find out after the cost plus profit so when the prof once the profit will be added into the cost price it would be a net takings or you can say it's a sales price or you can say the amount which will be charged from the consumer Pro uh, uh, who will charge the service provider will charge so we need to find out the amount of profitability charge on cost price as i already discussed at the time of a process costing if you remember there is one equation there is one table i already mentioned that if they ask the profit charge on net takings but you don't have a net takings or you don't have a sales price then how much percent profit you can charge on cost you can easily identify it i'll tell you how it would be if they ask to charge a profit 33 into 1/3 percent on net takings or a sales price then you can charge 50 percent profit on cost price this is a table how it would be that i already explained you in uh, in the past sessions if you just wanted to find out again how you it, you can find out you can see the previous lectures so here instead of the 33 into one third percent profit we will charge 50 percent profit because of this profit they asked to charge on net takings we don't have a net takings and that's why we convert this percentage into cost percentage how much amount of profit charge on cost price because of we have a cost price here so here it asks 50 percent charge profit on cost price the total cost is 9560 50 percent charge on this cost price it comes 4780 rupees 50 percent of this is 0 0.020 added into the cost this is your net takings this is your net takings or you can say this is the amount of the sales price which is actually not precisely sales price because of uh, the tax is going to add here but this is what the net takings where the uh, tax cannot be actually charged on this tax is always charged on your sales price so here the net takings is 14340 and the per passenger per kilometer is 0 0.060 now the next item is passenger tax is 20 percent on net freight so the 20 percent actually amount of tax is charged and this amount would be coming here that is 2868 rupees so that 2668 rupees added into the your net takings which comes to 0 0.012 which is five, fifth part of this 0 0.060 In 20 percent it comes fifth part so 0 0.060 divided by 5 your answer would be 0 0.012 which is actually a passenger tax after you added the passenger tax in net takings your total amount of freight charged from the passenger it is 17208 and the per passenger kilometer is 0 0.072 this is what all about the first part of your answer 
how you find out the passenger uh, how you find out the passenger per kilometer first we find out the fixed cost then the variable cost total amount of cost is this, which is called operating cost then we added the uh, profitability on this profitability was also not clearly defined whether it is on sales price or uh, cost price so we convert the uh, profitability percentage from sales price to cost price then we added uh, profitability on that we find out the net takings then they asked to charge the passenger tax we add passenger tax on that and then we find out the per passenger per kilometer how much amount of freight they would charge this is first answer per passenger per kilometer which is 0 0.072 the total amount of expenses 17 uh, total amount of freight is 17208 now the second answer we will find out and that is freight charge per passenger per trip how much amount of freight they would charge on a different different trips they have a three different trips three different routes and how much amount of freight they would charge per passenger per trip so here delhi to chandigarh 0.072 multiplied by 150 kilometers is a per trip right which comes to rupees 10.80 10 rupees and 80 paisa it means that if they runs for 150 kilometers uh, for Delhi to Chandigarh, they can ask 10 rupees and 80 paisa fare from the passenger for one way trip. So, a company can ask 10 rupees and 80 paisa from the passenger for running Delhi to Chandigarh. If the passenger wanted to come back also, then 10.80 multiplied by 2 he needs to pay. Then, second route is Delhi to Agra. This cost is remain same 0.072. Only the kilometers are going to change one by one. Now, Delhi to Agra 0 0.72, 0 0.072 multiplied by 120 kilometers, one way trip, which comes to rupees 8.64 and in local rupees 2.88. So, this is what I want to explain. The first is how many routes are there? This is a comparative analysis of the one service provider for the different different routes and what would be the charge in case of the different routes uh, the service provider works, what amount of per passenger kilometer what amount of actual fare and freight can be charged from the passengers, how the effective mileage and actual mileage would be considered in that uh, this calculations and what are the rules of actual mileage and effective mileage at the time of calculation. This is what I want to explain in a different way to compare the operating cost by the service provider himself only for their internal concern. That is what I want to explain you. Thank you very much. Be safe for till the next lecture. Thank you. Namaskar. Swadhyay TV.